Hey everybody, Brian at AMS Performance. Today we're gonna chat about running E85 on the VR30 motor. How much horsepower are the AMS low pressure fuel pump, RA405 high pressure fuel pump, and injectors rated for on full E85? The most horsepower you can get on E85 is about 825 to the tires with the AMS RA405 and the uh, Kinetic DI injectors on the VR30 motor. The low side fuel pump does limit that to about 600, so that's something that definitely is going to be addressed. Is it worth running full E85 and methanol injection? Yes, you can run methanol on a full E85 setup. The methanol does help cool the charge air. Cooler charge air is generally a bit more power. It's more complicated than that, but if you do step up to full E85 or full, fill up on it, you don't necessarily need to uh, disable or uninstall your methanol kit. The AMS Turbo Kit is similar to the Pure Stage 2. What is the incentive of going this route? The differences in the two setups generally come down to efficiency and capacity. The AMS kit will be able to get to that power level at a pretty high level of efficiency, whereas the other setup is gonna be a little bit more maxed out, a little bit hotter, a little bit less efficient. So you can push the AMS kit far beyond that number and you can get more out of it, but you'll also have a, like a nice well, heat soak a lot. You'll have good charge air temps, good fuel consumption. You'll be well within the range of everything else. So it's just overall a bit more efficient kit. How is more power made on regular gas than E85 for max horsepower numbers? Power capacity between the fuels almost always comes down to the energy density of the fuel itself. Race gas is the most energy dense, ethanol is the least energy dense, so you need more volume of flow to get the same power with ethanol as you would pump gas or race gas or something like that. Now that being said, the ethanol does help cool the charge air and there's some other density related things that are an advantage of it. So if you have the fuel system to support that amount of power on E85, it's always a consideration. If you're limited by the amount of fuel you can move, then race gas is gonna be your maximum power option. At what outside temperature does running E85 make it difficult to start the car? Temperature about 50 degrees Fahrenheit is about where E85 starts to get a little tricky. At that point, I would move down to E50. Anything below 35, 40 degrees, I would probably stay on regular oil pump gas. I know that's not the most fun thing, but that's what you get for living somewhere cold. Do the new injectors make any difference in power with stock turbos? The injectors themselves aren't going to be an instant power adder, not necessarily like, let's say, a freer flowing exhaust or intake or just a larger turbocharger overall, the injectors A, need the capacity of everything else to be there to deliver enough fuel to make that power so they'll need more air, cooler air, things like that. They'll need the larger turbocharger. So if you just slap them on a completely stock car, there's not gonna be a huge difference. If you're limited, you have the fuel system, you have the turbo setup, you have the cooling setup, the injectors are gonna allow you to add more power. Did you guys use these injectors on the 10 second car with stock turbos? Actually, we didn't. Back in 2017, the uh, injectors weren't even available. I don't even think development had started on them at that point, so we were, uh, we were running legit stock. Do the injectors make any difference with the RA338, or are they only necessary with the RA405? So the RA338 is going to move enough fuel to not max out the factory injector. Once you move into the RA405, you will start to get to a point where you're going to need a higher flowing injector to maximize the amount of fuel that that pump is able to deliver. When are the upgraded fuel rails coming out? Right now we don't have concrete plans for an upgraded fuel rail. We are supplying brand new factory fuel rails with the injector replacements. That is a recommended change. So we will keep you updated if we get started. As you might imagine, the high pressure fluid systems are a little bit more complicated, a little bit more sensitive to materials and processes. So it's a little bit of a longer journey to make something that is gonna be better and more reliable in the long run. Is there any development plans for an upgraded VR30 fuel sensor? That is for sure something that's on our radar. We know that 
there's you know failure issues longevity issues with the factory sensor range issues with pressure so suffice to say it's being worked on thank you for your questions keep them coming thank you so much for your questions we're always happy to answer them feel free to keep them coming for more information and data check us out at amsperformance.com and of course out there on social media instagram facebook youtube where our new vlogs are have fun with those see you soon